Coming up on Mountain News at 6, two people are dead following a triple shooting in Pulaski County. And crews across Kentucky continue to try and put out forest fires. Plus, a cold front looks to bring scattered showers and cooler temperatures to the region. Those details coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. A grandson is on the run after police in Southern Kentucky say he killed his father and grandfather and tried to kill his grandmother. The horrific series of events played out at two homes in Science Hill in Pulaski County. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has been talking to investigators and others shocked and saddened by the tragedy. You probably thought something bad happened there, right? Something bad, something really bad. It yep. wasn't something Jim Connors was expecting to see so early Wednesday morning. Amazing how many cops there are out at 2.30 in the morning. And it Sheriff's is. Office was joined by Somerset and State Police after they say two people were found dead and a third was badly injured. She escaped to tell police that her grandson opened fire on all of them. And to have that kid do that to people, three people that are probably the closest in his life is amazing, amazing, terrible. The sheriff says 20-year-old Austin Prather killed his father, Ardeth Trey Prather, his grandfather, Ardeth Ray Prather, and then badly injured his grandmother, Joanne, before running off. We don't have no idea what the motive was or reasoning was, so that's what we want to safely find him and uh, try to figure it out. Police say that they have received a ton of tips from people all over this community. They say a lot of those people contacted them when Austin Prather had asked them for money. They say that he left in a brown Jeep, and from the numerous reports, they believed he was still in Kentucky as of early Wednesday. The crime has shocked many in the area and has them asking a lot of questions. I, I, I'm telling you, in America right now, I'm, I'm amazed at the evil. Joanne Prather was airlifted to UK Hospital, and as of last report, she was improving. She gave us information of who had, um, who had done this, which would be her grandson. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Warrants issued for Austin Prather are for two counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. A Wayne County man faces multiple charges after deputies say he hit an officer. It happened yesterday when deputies with the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office responded to a complaint of a disorderly person inside a Social Security office. When deputies tried to arrest 35-year-old Joshua Hardwick of Monticello, they say he struck a deputy in the face. He was eventually arrested and taken to the Pulaski County Detention Center. One man is behind bars after police responded to a complaint. It happened yesterday on Center Avenue in Whitley City in McCreary County. Deputies with the sheriff's office were told a man was driving recklessly. After pulling him over, police discovered 52-year-old John Phelps was under the influence. It was later determined the vehicle Phelps was driving was reported stolen. Phelps was taken to the Knox County Detention Center. A Monticello woman has admitted to her role in a federal drug case. Tiffany Dethridge entered a guilty plea last week as part of a plea agreement in U.S. District Court in London. She was charged with two counts of conspiracy to distribute controlled substances. The charges stemmed from a traffic stop by Wayne County Sheriff's deputies earlier this year. She faces up to 20 years in prison and a fine of $1 million. Sentencing is set for February 22nd. Police in Laurel County are asking for your help finding a stolen motorcycle. Here's a picture of the bike uh, we have, I believe. There it is. Deputies believe it was stolen from Miller Lane just outside of London early Tuesday morning. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Sheriff's Office at 606-864-6600 or message the department's Facebook page. We are tracking mild, also dry weather to continue across the mountains into this evening. Here's a live look from UVA Wise as the sun continues to set. We are clear at this location, but some areas still dealing with that hazy sky at this hour, and that's why we have some low air quality in some areas. This yellow color is a moderate air quality, so we are watching out for that to continue as we go into this evening, also into tonight, as those fires also continue as well. Those temperatures at this hour are still well above average. We should be close to 60 
degree. Most of us in the middle to lower 70s right now. 72 for Hazard, 75 in Harlan, also Manchester, and 76 over in Irvine at this hour. So that November warmth does continue into your Wednesday evening. Up on the radar, a clean sweep also continues into this evening, and that will also stick around as we go into tonight. Also for the first half of your Thursday, watching out for those rain chances to increase on Thursday. And same story on Friday. All thanks to a cold front, we wake up in the middle to lower 60s, but some 30s on the way by Friday evening also into this weekend. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. As those forest fires continue to burn throughout the region, crews have been working endlessly. As of earlier this afternoon, more than 11,000 acres have burned in Kentucky, most of that here in the mountains, and there were still more than 60 fires either active or being monitored. WIMT's Olivia Calfee spoke with the Kentucky Division of Forestry Wildfire Mitigation Specialist about what you can do to stay safe. One thing we want to press on residents is do not burn outside right now. As crews continue working to contain the flames, Kesley Baker with the Kentucky Division of Forestry says the community plays a huge part. Unfortunately, most fires are human caused, whether accidental or on purpose. As of Wednesday afternoon, Baker confirmed that at least 17 of the fires were started by a human with dozens more still unconfirmed. Right now, even if you're trying to burn brush or debris, it is highly dangerous and could, it could get out of control very quickly. With some fires even spreading more than 1,000 acres and the flames continuing to spread, she says folks need to remember the air quality is poor. Right now, where we are, it is at a unhealthy range. So especially small children, uh, elderly should limit any strenuous activities outside. And if you are one of those um, people in the sensitive category, it might be beneficial to wear an N95 mask while outside. And remember to always report flames or smoke before it gets out of hand. If there is a resident that is that has concerns, um, please feel free to call 911 and they will dispatch local fire department as well as notify us uh, of any changes that you may be concerned about. Fire officials say to never assume someone has already called. In Pike County, Olivia Calfi, WYMT Mountain News. For more information on total burn bans, and there are many across the region now, also your county's air quality or the active fires in your area, you can find this story on our website at WYMT.com. And we have just learned in the last few minutes, Letcher County has declared a state of emergency due to the forest fire situation. We also understand Kentucky 3408 at Elk Creek is closed. Officials say long delays are expected due to a large forest fire in that area. Officials say you need to find an alternate route. The forest fire situation has worsened to the point where it's more than the state can handle. Kentucky Division of Forestry's Alexandria Blevin says crews from states out west as far as Oregon and Idaho are coming to the eastern part of Kentucky because many nearby states are dealing with their own forest fire issues. Floyd County officials are working to upgrade the mapping and signage for the county road system and asking for the community's help. Judge Executive Robbie Williams says the county has been addressing issues with mapping since moving its dispatch into the county, working to make sure roads are clearly marked and each section of the county has a specific EMS responder. Now he says the main focus is making sure signage is in place to properly indicate road names, so he's asking the public to be vigilant and report any incorrect or missing signs. Well, those signs are critical. If you've got a policeman, you have a, an ambulance, fire department, somebody that really doesn't know the area, and they, they pull up and they're trying to find streets, it could be the, the difference between you know someone getting the medical treatment or, or, or the fire department. William says visible house numbers are also important for first responders looking for a home. 
If your road is not properly marked, you're encouraged to contact the physical court at 606-886-9193. Governor Andy Bashir is still celebrating last night's win. He will serve another four years in office. The governor says he plans to serve out his term, putting an end to speculation he might run for something else. As a father, he says he's glad that his two children can keep learning and growing right where they are. I'm happy that their lives are going to remain stable. Frankfurt's been really good to us. I'm just living in this moment. The governor says he will spend every day of the next four years focused on his goals. The governor will be inaugurated for his second term on December 12th. Several eastern Kentucky counties voted blue in the governor's race. Breathitt, Knott, Letcher, and Perry were among the hardest hit counties in last year's flood. And the majority of voters in each of those counties voted for Governor Andy Bashir. WYMT's R.J. Johnson has more. Several eastern Kentucky counties voted blue in Tuesday's gubernatorial election. Breathitt, Knott, Letcher, and Perry counties were among those that traditionally vote Republican. But this time, those counties flipped. The he had probably been here more than the last 20 governors. And you might say, really, you think? So he was here wanting to know what could, what could we do, what did we need to do. Breathitt County Judge Executive Jeff Noble says with everything Eastern Kentuckians have been through, including the July 2022 flood, Brashear was always there. It's just been, been the same way with him. I mean, it's been flooding, it's been tornadoes, it's been ice storms, it's been, been some of everything, uh, COVID, uh, but he's always been here and, and uh, and he started doing that off, right off the bat day one. Adding that even though several folks in the region may have conservative values and beliefs, Bashir's presence has been felt. To be able to help the way he has helped, and uh, I think people just appreciate it. I mean, again, you know, everybody's got different values. Uh, some things you don't agree with. But again, that's just part of being human, a human being. But. Uh, you know, I'm conservative, I've got conservative values. Noble says he hopes Bashir continues to support Eastern Kentuckians as they continue on the road of flood recovery. We've, we've got so much work done, but we've got so much more to do. But I look for him to be with us every step of the way. And if he's not, I, I would be, I'll, be, I'll be the biggest surprise person in Breathitt County. Um, because like I say, what he said, he, he stood by it and he's made it happen. In Breathitt County, RJ Johnson, WIMT Mountain News. Noble says Governor Bashir has helped with flood recovery in many ways, especially with the Team Kentucky Fund. However, he says Bashir's physical presence was one of the main reasons why he was reelected, in his opinion. Well, temperatures are warm this evening, but some 30s are on the way by this weekend. Your first alert forecast coming up. Plus, with Veterans Day fast approaching, Floyd County officials are celebrating past and current veterans while also looking toward their futures.